Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm outside Waterloo Station in London. Today is another episode of Branch Line Britain, and the branch we're going to see has quite a few buildings by the architect James Robb Scott. He was the Southern Railway's architect. The Victory Arch behind me over there, that was also designed by James Robb Scott. So I thought we'd start here. I have got to get a train from here to the branch line we're going to. So I'm going to go across the road, get my train, and we're going to go and find this branch line. So here we are on the platforms at Waterloo and my train has just arrived, it's a class 455 and we're going to Chessington, we're not going to Chessington World of Adventure so if you're expecting the roller coaster and zoos, I'm sorry to disappoint you but this isn't what this video is about, it's about the branch line that goes to Chessington. So for those of you who have not seen a branch line Britain episode 4, what we do, we go to the branch line, we walk along it, or not along it, along it's the area it serves, we have a look at the stations and then I catch the train back. So this train is going to Chessington South. I'm only going to go on it as far as Motspur Park and it's just beyond between Motspur Park and Worcester Park where the branch leaves the main line which goes down towards Guildford, Dorking etc. Um, so we'll leave this train there and then we'll have a look at some of the stations and as I said they're designed by the architect James Rob Scott. So this is the class 455, they haven't got very long in service left so I wanted to do this Branch Line Britain episode while they're still running. This is a 4557. If you have a look, the second car, I don't know how obvious it is. In fact what I'll do, I'll show you on this one coming in now because this is also a 4557. Basically they're off the Mark III body shell but one of the carriages is an X-Class 508. So have a look at the second carriage. As it goes by you'll see it's slightly different. So that's a Mark III body shell, that's a Mark III body shell, look at the next one. So that is the same body shell as you get on a class 508, 507, 313, 314, 315. 315 at the time of filming are just about still in service out of Liverpool Street, down to a few units, but possibly by the time you watch the video they will have been withdrawn. But if you want to ride the 455s, enjoy them while you can. Incidentally, the um, class 707s which are fairly new, don't have much longer in service left out of Waterloo, they're all moving to South Eastern, so before I get on the train, I'm going to leave you this view of Class 455s, as I said, enjoy them while you can. So, just before we depart Waterloo Station on a Class 455, these trains are due to be replaced by the Class 701, but they haven't yet entered passenger service due to various um, problems but I won't go into that so we'll wait and see they should be in service soon I'm sort of looking forward to them because it's something new to see I've seen a few of them already but I've not traveled on one as for all the other trains in Waterloo well I have I've seen them all um, quite a while ago but as for riding them I've not quite had all the 455 for haulage I won't ever get the whole class because I didn't get all the southern ones some of them all of the southern ones have been scrapped now and one or two of the southwest ones have been scrapped this unit I'm sitting in I have traveled on before but the one we're coupled up to I haven't, so that is a winning unit, and that's so I'll be able to tick that off because it's still powering the same train. So even if you're not in it, it still classes as a winning unit. So I'm getting a winning unit, so I'm happy. So I'm hopefully going to get a few other winners in today, but I'm just going to enjoy riding these trains while while I can. And then, as I said, it's a branch on Britain episode, so we're going to explore the whole area between Motspur Park and Chessington. So here we are, we have arrived at Motspur Park, which is the junction for the Chessington branch. The junction itself, Motspur Park Junction, is about a quarter of a mile that way. I'm not going to point the camera that way for long because it's very bright in the sun. Just give you an idea what Motspur Park is. It's a typical suburban suburb. You look around, you can see houses on that side, and you can see the, where the shops are. There's a pub there on that side. Now, the railway line through here opened in 1859, but this station was added as late as 1925, so it's not even 100 years old. The Chessington branch is even newer, but we'll get on to the dates of the Chessington branch when we get down there. The name Motspur Park comes from, there was a family in the 14th century called the Mott family, and they had a farm, and it was known as Mott's Furs Farm, and the name's gradually become adapted to become Motspur. So then when they decided to open a station here, it was known as Motspur Park. There's a few park stations in this area, typical sort of suburbs that grew up, like there's Rains Park um, and various other ones in the area. And there's Worcester Park, which is the next station that way beyond the branch. We're gonna go out the station. That's quite an interesting station. It's got a bridge, so a bit 40 towers. This because you go up and down and up. 
again. So we're going to make our way out. I've noticed there by the pub, it's a public footpath. So you can use the station footbridge to travel through the station. Now I've got a London travel card, which is what I nearly always buy when I come up to London. Occasionally I use Oyster cards. So I'll just give you a look at the station, looking down there towards London. There are no ticket barriers here. There wouldn't be much room if they wanted to have them. You've just got a couple of ticket machines. There is a ticket office which is open. We're going to go up the bridge now and we're going to go out the station. So we'll see the station from above. We go up here. So this is the apex of the two bridges. Don't get a lot of steam trains coming through here, but this would be quite a good place if a steam train or a charter train came through. You see a gasometer in the background. If the camera's picking it out, there is a huge gasometer. So we're going to go out the back way of the station. It has another nice view of the station itself. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to walk as I do in Branch Line Britain. We're going to, I'm gonna walk along and visit all of the stations on the branch. So you've got two Chessingtons, North and South. You've got Maiden Manor, or Malden Manor, sorry. And you've got Tolworth. So this is the back entrance to the station. But as I said, this is also a public footpath. So it's a very sort of suburban commuter line. The other Branch Line Britain episodes I've done so far, the train has operated as a shuttle in a true Branch Line fashion. This one, they are through trains, but still, it is known as the Chessington Branch. So here I am on typical London Suburban Street, and I've got a bit of walking to do now. Well, as soon as the gates went down, I thought I'd just run back and see some class 455s. I actually came out that road over there, Claremont Avenue. As I said, I'm walking to the branch itself because we can't really see the junction unless you're on a train. So what we're doing, we're going to head down here. I'm going to use my OS map. There's a couple of things I just wanted to point out here, which aren't directly related to the railway, but of interest. We're currently in the London borough of Merton. You can just see the sign. We're about to cross into the London Borough of Kingston. Just up here there's a sign. It says Royal Borough of Kingston on Thames. So we're leaving one borough for another. And it looks like, if you have a look, well, there's a few, there's a, a river here. This is the Beverly Brook. So the Beverly Brook marks the boundary. So if you have a look there, it says Royal Borough of Kingston on Thames. Down there is the Beverly Brook. And if we can get across the road, it's quite interesting, there's an actual old boundary post. I can't get across. Oh yeah, here we go. So let's have a look at this. So there's a boundary post. It says Malden and Coombe and Merton and Morden. So that's a boundary post. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk that way and we're gonna go and find the branch line itself. So after walking about a mile or so, I've reached the centre of Malden Manor, this area here is I suppose what you could call the village centre. Looks like there was a pub here, it's now a co-op. And as for the Chessington branch, well, there it is in front of the stat is Malden Manor Station. You see the road bridge going across there now. As I said, back at Motspur Park, that station was a fairly late addition, opened in 1925. This line is even later. This section opened as late as 1938. It was later extended. The Chessington section's a bit new, but we'll get onto that. So this opened this branch started off as a short branch just from here to Tolworth, the next station, with this one intermediate station. I do really like how they've painted on the concrete. Let's have a look at this giant um, sign saying it's called Malden Manor. So there's no mistaking where we are. Look at that, that's, that's quite nice. And you can now get an idea of the architecture, the concrete architecture, the James Rob Scott design buildings of the line. So he was the Southern Railways architect. He did design quite a few railway stations around the Southern. When we did the Bromley North branch, he did design Bromley North station. So we saw another one of his works. And there's various other stations around South England, some in London, some further afield. Some of them, unfortunately, like Hastings and Exmouth have been demolished and replaced with buildings which are nothing like as stylish as these. So it's kind of an early form of brutalism works. It's 1930s Art Deco, built in the 1930s. 
I really like all the curves and everything it has. So let's go and have a look inside. It appears the station has got a cafe, which is quite good. We come into here, into the ticket office. So there is, or well, it appears there is a ticket office, but it's not currently open. I like how the roof sort of steps in like this. Another thing that quite a few stations out this way have, which is good, they have, um, you can swap books, you can pick a book up from here, you can take your old books away. There's even a VHS video <laughs> there. So um, yeah, if you still got a VHS player, like I have, I don't know if that one's going to interest me, but you can get them. So there's a ticket machine, as I said, no ticket barriers, just a couple of oyster readers. The reason I'm not touching in is because I have a travel card. So there's a couple of, that goes to the down platform, that's the London platform. Let's go to the down platform. Oh yeah, look, it's an official bridge. We're 11 miles and 07 change. I'd have thought that is from London Waterloo. So let's walk through. It's very echoey in here. You can hear my voice echoing. Anyway. Let's go up to platform two. So it says Malden Manor, which is where we are, Tolworth, Chessington North, Chessington South. Looks like it was all tile points, and now it's been painted over. So we're gonna go up onto the platform. I don't know if there's a train due just yet, but we'll have a look. And then I'm gonna continue walking, because we're gonna visit all the stations before catching the train back. So when we get up here, here we have the station, so it's got that kind of sort of um, metro-y feel to it. Interesting, these little white holes, whether they were glass bricks once, I'm not too sure. Anyway, is there a train due? There's a train, not a train due for a quarter of an hour or so. What about the same on the other side or a well, slightly less time? So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to get on with my walk and uh, we're going to continue to Tollworth. I can just see there's a and the camera's messing around with the light. Anyway, behind that, um, there's a pylon. I can see in the distance Tolworth Tower, which is the main landmark of Tolworth. So I'm going to now walk to Tolworth. I'm just a little way on from Malden Manor Station. We're just coming down to the Hogsmill River. Oh, near a train. And there's a, we might just see the train through the trees and I'll get on to what's over there. Yeah, not the best view of a train, I agree, but what I wanted to show you is, so this is the Hogsmill River just here, which I need to cross. I'm going to continue walking that way down through the houses. So there's two bridges here over the river. So it flows down that way towards the Thames. It's one of the tributaries of the Thames. And I can't really show you very easily if there's so many trees. But if all these trees weren't here, we'd be able to see the most substantial structure on the line. It's a viaduct which takes the railway over the Hogsmill River. What we'll do, we'll walk down here and we'll walk under the viaduct. And then that way will give us a chance to have a look at what I suppose is the biggest structure on the line. It's just ahead of us here. So as I said, this part of the line opened in 1938 to Tolworth. So it's, the stations are in quite quick succession, you know, only about a mile or so between each station. So we get to here, it gives you quite a nice view of the viaduct. What we'll do, we'll just uh, get a closer look, we'll walk underneath the viaduct and then I'm going to go back that way and continue on. I believe it's this section of path, although I haven't actually seen these signs, that forms the London Loop, the orbital path which goes all the way around London, which is something one day I'd like to do. I have done bits of it, in fact I have done this bit, although I don't overly remember this bit. It might be on the other side, but I'll go through here and I'll just go under the viaduct. Go between the arches just here and we can have a look at the, the river in the main portion. Oh, that's quite interesting. So here we are. It's very bright with the sun in the winter sun. Huh. There's a, a motorbike in the river. I don't know. Anyway, it's unexpected. So yeah, here we are. You can see the architecture of the viaduct. I'm going to continue on that way and we're now going to walk towards Tolworth.
I did manage to see a train from just down there. Funny enough, that was the same units we came to Motspur Park on. So they'd obviously been back to London and come back out in the time I've been doing this. It's quite nice artwork along here under the bridge, which does brighten it up. It makes a change from the graffiti. It's a mosaic, so from a distance you can see the picture. But if we go closer, come close on this fox just here, you can see it's made up of lots of different tiles and everything. So that's really quite nice. It certainly, as I said, brightens up the viaduct. What we're going to do now though, I'm going to cross the Hogs Mill River on foot. I shall later cross it on the train when I go back towards London. And we're going to continue through some houses and that should take me on to Tolworth. So the river is just down there. So that's my next place I'm going to walk to. Now here we are, here's the railway line again. That's looking towards London. You can just see Malden Manor Station in the background now. I don't know how well the camera's picking out, but it gives me the illusion looking that way that the line is flat here and it goes uphill but it looks like it goes uphill where the viaduct is I reckon it's flat, it's level and it's now going uphill at this point so if we go over this rather wide road bridge which um, takes the, well it seems, I think it just goes to a school this road so it doesn't seem to go anywhere but if we look onto the other side you can see the railway goes up and that appears to be a summit and over there I can just see the canopy of Tolworth Station, whether the camera's picking it out, I'm not sure. So it's not too far now. Oh, I don't know if you can see that that building there. That is Tolworth Tower, so that's the main landmark of the area. So I haven't got far to go now. I've got to walk over there and let's go and have a look at Tolworth Station. So here we are in Tolworth. That's Tolworth Tower, designed by the architect George Marsh, the same architect who designed the centre point tower right in the heart of London at Tottenham Court Road. It's 265 feet high. It was finished in 1964. It looks like it's currently empty. There's a big sign saying two let, so I hope they find a use for it. And then going from 1960s brutalist architecture, we go to 1930s brutalist stroke art deco architecture. You can see this dual carriageway was obviously here when they built the railway. As I said, this was the original terminus because it's got a big enough bridge to carry it over. It's not like they've had to put a newer bridge in, which is what you quite often see on railway lines when they've had to put a dual carriageway through so it was fairly future proof. There's the, the station there, the front of the station which we're going in a minute. There's a rather nice painting there of a deer. When the line gets a bit more rural beyond here I'm going to look out for deer. I don't suppose I'll see any but you never know. And then like we saw at Malden Manor there is a huge sign saying Tolworth just in case you're not sure where you are. So I think that's really nice that they painted this southern region sign. So in Tolworth, what we're going to do now though, we're going to go and have a look on the platform itself. This, this bridge is a bit like the viaducts over the Hogs Mill River, but a smaller version. Get another nice view. I'd love to go up there. If you went up Tolworth Tower, you'd get a really nice view aspect of the area. All of probably the whole walk I've done today, you'd be able to see. So this is the front of Tolworth Station. We're just coming into it now. So. As I said, it's designed by the same architects as the other stations on the line, so it has that family likeness. But they're all a little bit different. If we come in here, there's a ticket office. See the ceiling. It's the other way around to Holden Manor. We come into here. Again, no ticket barriers. There's oyster card readers. There's stairs. So that goes up to the London platform. Um, we'll go to the down platform again. We should get quite a good view from there looking across. The other interesting thing about this station is there is still some freight on the branch. There is, I believe it's an aggregate terminal at Tolworth, so I'm going to see if we can see that. I know it exists, but I'm not sure exactly where, but you do sometimes see trains coming from it. Another interesting thing, you can see these tiles. These are what there would have been, or what there were, at Malden Manor, but they've been painted over. You look like you could put adverts in the middle of them, which is quite a nice idea. So come up onto the platform and here here's a class 455 the line curves off that way this is probably the one we came on I'm suspecting because um, or is it no I'm trying to think because the one that we saw heading towards Chessington on the, the viaduct was as I said the one we went yeah five uh, 862 and then this one should be 716 is it? oh no 713 so it's not the units we came on 
So there must be, it must be that as soon as one train arrives at Chessington, the other departs. We'll have a look at how it works with Chessington when we get there. Let's just watch this train pull out. see it's clearly going off down a bit of a hill so I think it's the stations that on the whole are level and then the line in between is it level I can just see up there I can't see we're going to get anywhere to see it we might be able to I'll have to have a look at the map but I can just see the points that go over to where the freight terminal is so you can see goods trains freight trains coming through here so this was the end of the line for a while for for just a year the line opened to here and then they completed the extension to Chessington North and South, which is what we're going to do next. Well, there's Tolworth Tower in the background. You may just be able to see the viaduct to the railway over the dual carriageway. The walk now takes on a different feel. We're going to walk through Tolworth Court Farm Fields Nature Reserve. So that takes us away from the busy road. Because so far, doing this branch, I have been mainly going through residential areas. So as we saw back at the station, there was a big painting of a deer I said I'm not promising but we might see deer we're basically taking on a much more rural feel so I'm going to follow my way through here and then I'm going to there's a stream called the bone gate stream which I think must be well look at this it's gone from we saw it was like over there it feels like we're out in completely out in the rural countryside sort of a reminder of um, you know the rural areas how all of this would have been before they started building up so I'm going to head across there find the boat gate stream walk along that and then that's where we'll find the two Chessington stations so I've just come across a couple of fields if you hear buzzing sound that's because there is a pile on there and this here is the bone gate stream has some elm trees here so it's nice to see them still growing although I'll probably get killed off by Dutch elm disease eventually. So that's looking upstream on the Bone Gate stream, and that is looking downstream. So that will flow into the Hogs Mill River, which we saw earlier, and then eventually into the River Ted. So I'm going to continue following the river now along here. I could follow this for quite a way, but I will branch off to visit the Chessington stations. So let's go and find Chessington itself. So here we are, we're in Chessington town centre. There is Chessington North Station. Now what I've done, I effectively rushed the last bit. I wanted to get here. I need to get the train at 14.36 back in the other way. So what we'll do, we'll have a better look at the station then. The reason why I'm rushing back one stop to Tolworth is because as I mentioned, there is still freight on the line. A quick look on real time trains told me there is a freight train due. So I need to get that train back to Tolworth and then I can go and see that freight train. So, go up here and catch my train. So here we are, we're back at Tolworth again. I've just realised, and I should have had a look really when I was here earlier on, but the sidings for the aggregate terminal are just next to the station. So if I'd come down there, I'd have seen that. So um, I feel a bit, I should have had a look down there rather than just looking on the platform. Anyway, there goes our train. The one we've just arrived on. I've got to wait here about a quarter of an hour for the goods train to come along. So what will happen is the goods train will pass through the station. We actually have to stop here and then there's a head shunt. Now it's not so obvious from here but the head shunt is level or very slightly going uphill. The line itself goes up an even steeper hill and then the train will propel its wagons reverse into the aggregate terminal. So it's quite an interesting process. Looking that way I can see how the line really goes up over a hump over that road and then drops down again so I'm gonna go and wait for the good train to arrive.
that was quite exciting to see a freight train arrive. Just pulling off now. So I had to stop. There was someone down on the um, down at the ground frame, so they must do the points to let it into the goods yard. So up here, what I'll do, I've got a bit of time till my train back to Chessington arrives. I thought we'll walk down here. I don't know if we're going to see much, but we could have a look at yeah the aggregate terminal from what we can see from the platform. So it's quite nice. Of um, the branch lines we've looked at so far, the only other one where we saw a goods train was the Greenford branch, and that was the Greenford branch is a bit different in it's not a dead end branch. Although the trains are effectively run as a branch, you know, um, it is used by trains from the Chilton Main Line connecting with the Great Western Main Line. So it's kind of a through line as well, but there's no through passenger trains. And, or at least there, there is at the moment, there's one, but that's been withdrawn soon. Anyway, that's something else. But this line is a dead end line, but it does have this freight terminal. So the buffers of the freight terminal. Well, they're just beyond yeah, there. You can see one of them through the power state fence. I know it's not the best view. So it's nice that this line still has freight service. We'll see more when we get to the other end, but there was a coal depot. As I mentioned, this line was originally intended to be a through line. It wasn't intended to be a branch line, but the war, the outbreak of the Second World War put an end to everything. So it's only ever been a branch line, but it would have continued to leverhead. And the track does or did, we'll find out when we get there, go beyond Chessington. So there's some of the track there. So there's three tracks in there. So I think the local is going to have to repel its train into here. And then I suppose it will run round when it's finished unloading. I'm assuming it, I think, I think it was loaded. So I think it'll unload. There's different types of sand and ballast in those hoppers. It'll unload and then the local would run round, pull the train. No, yeah, the loco would push the train that way into the head shunt and then pull the train out. So it's just disappeared now. If you have a look here at the end of the platform, you might as well see there is a little dolly signal. So that's like a little shunt signal. The train has disappeared. So what we'll do when we get on the train, we'll have a look at the terminal as we go past, providing it's not too busy. If the train's really, really busy, I might not be able to talk, but that is my plan. But we'll see when it arrives. So I'm going to stand here. I'm going to wait for my train to take me back to Chessington now. Well, here we are, I'm on the train. I'm on the pioneer of the class 455, 455701. Now, what we're going to do, I'm sat on the in the metro style but I don't normally sit here because I'm on a train I like to look out the window but when you're looking out the window with a camera this makes quite a good seat so we're gonna have a look at the, the yard as we go past and we should see that class 66 so I haven't yet seen evidence that she's propelling her train into the yard but we'll soon see so oh yeah look the train already is in the yard it's, it's actually in the and there's like a shed there so they must yeah, she's, I think, very very slowly moving backwards. We'll see the loco as we go by. Quite a long train. Here, 414. There we go. I think um, maybe it was empty. I mean, if you know, is, is, is that an empty? Or is that... So has that gone there to empty or to pick up? Then comment and tell me. Um, I'm going to now continue to enjoy the ride. We're just going past the football stadium so the river I was walking along was just over down there I'm going to go back to Chessington and then we'll walk back down to the river and then we'll continue so we find the end of the line.
So here we are back at Chessington North. Our train has just departed. It was funny because I was on 455701 and the other unit was 702. So it's like the first two units. So it's good to know they're still in service. Here we are on the down platform. Having a look across there, I reckon once said Chessington North on that board, it'd be nice to get that restored. Do you think they can paint those really big signs down on the ground, which are great. So I think I paint one there saying Chessington North, if that's what it was. Or did it, did it maybe say Southern Railway? One or the other. Well, while we're up here, we can have a look at the station architecture from here. So you look out down there, you can see the roof and everything. It looks like that was a lift, possibly for luggage. It does seem at the moment that none of the stations on the branch are step free. So um, yeah, just take note if you're thinking of doing this line um, and you know, you're know you gonna need lifts. There currently doesn't seem to be any, but maybe one day they could make that into a lift. I'm not sure about the upside, but possibly they'll add them in. Anyway. Um, Let's have a look around. So we've got the same, seems to be the feature of the line, these canopies, concrete canopies, which do, you know, keep you dry. Oh, look at that. It says a light at the next station for Chessington World Adventure. So if you are thinking of doing this branch on your way there, take note, don't get off here. This is the main town center. I did read somewhere there were plans though when they opened this line to give these stations different names. I think, um, I, I can't remember where I read that once. It was something like maybe Chessington Manor and possibly Chessington Park. 13 miles and 26 chains now from Waterloo, I suppose. So it's quite good, you can work out exactly how long the line is. So that's a bridge we're going to go now down here and out the station. I know we saw this when we arrived, but it was a bit rushed because I wanted to catch that train. And now I'm going to have, as I keep saying, I'm going to walk along the river. So it's been a bit different to have this little ride in the middle. The last time we did a ride in the middle was on the Henley branch because it was the only way of crossing the Thames. There simply was no alternative route. So. Here we are down here, we're going out the front of the station. As I said, no ticket barriers, there is a ticket office. It's interesting that none of the stations on this line have ticket barriers, it certainly makes it easier for doing this. And um, if you wanted to see a train, I did once, the only other time I've seen a local hall train on this branch was there was a time once there was a buffer puffer rail tour, one of those rail tours that goes up and down all the little branch lines and they once ran one with two class 20s. It went up the Windsor branch, up this branch, the Hampton Court branch and various other lines. So I have seen class 20s pass through here. Um, so I have seen local hall train on the section of the line. So there's the station, quite a brutalist looking building. I do really quite like it. I'm gonna walk back to the river now and then we're gonna find Chessington South. So I've just come down the road and here we are, here's the Bonegate Brook again. So I'm gonna follow that along here. Well, talking of uh, rivers and edges of London boroughs, there once again is the London borough of Kingston. Earlier on we saw the Beverly Brook was the boundary between the borough of Kingston and the borough of Merton. Well if you look across the road there's a sign, that's the borough of Yule and Epsom. So it seems the Bonegate Brook is the boundary between those two boroughs. What we're going to do now though, we're going to go down here. I've noticed there's also another fairly long distance park path or semi long distance path the Thames down link that is a long distance path formed purely to provide a link between two other long distance paths it links the Thames path and the North Downs path so that's quite funny that there's a long distance path purely to link to long distance paths it's starting to get a bit misty now it's becoming getting close to the evening so I'm going to have to really get on and uh, walk to Chessington south I have to be honest, gone the longer route, the more interesting route. I could have just gone straight, but I've chosen to go along by a river and pile on. So I'm going to continue this way now. Well, I think it's fair to say I've literally reached the end of London and the urban area. Coming out here now into a field. So that way is looking back towards London. You can see how rural the area is. There's some houses over there, so that's the edge of Chessington, and then literally out into open countryside. Over there somewhere would be Chessington World of Adventures, the theme park. I did go there once when I was a teenager. I haven't been most disappointed, they've just taken up the miniature railway. Uh, I did have a go on the monorail, but it's probably not someone I'm likely to go again. If it had a miniature railway, of course I'd be going there to do an episode of Miniature Road Britain, but it doesn't. Um, it seems to be a bit of a trend, unfortunately. Fort Park had a two-foot gauge railway, that's gone. Alton Towers had a miniature railway or narrow gauge railway years ago. I did make a video at Alton Towers a couple of years ago. I would at this point say have a look at link on screen now, but unfortunately 
my memory card got corrupted and I lost all the footage and that video was never published and um, I just didn't see it viable to pay to go in again and re-record it also. Um, yeah, I haven't done particularly well with theme parks and making videos. So, as I said, I, wouldn't, it's, I don't say never to anywhere, but it's unlikely I'll be making a video at Chessington World of Adventures anytime soon, but never say never. Anyway, I need to actually go back to Chessington. I think that would be the best thing, because like I said, I followed this walk, which is really nice, and it's worked quite nicely with the doing the Branch Line Britain episode that we could look at all the stations and at the same time we could do quite a pleasant walk. It's quite, you know, looking out across there, it's a shame the camera's not really picking it out, there's a really nice setting of the sky and, um, you know, just the backdrop, the camera's not doing it justice. Anyway, on this side we have a few oak trees, young oak trees and older oak trees and then fields across there. So the, um, What's it called? The Bonegate Stream. The valley of it runs just along down there. It's getting really quite sort of misty on the fields. I think if we were to see any deer, this would be where I can almost imagine seeing one. Just yeah. So, no, no, there's no deers today. But anyway, so I, I've, I've effectively walked along the woods up there from the stream itself. I'm going to continue now down to the stream, and then we've got to go and find Chessington South Station. Well, it's nearly getting dark now. We've come across the fields and we're back into the urban area of Chessington and we've nearly finished the video now. We're just coming up to Chessington South Station. It's just across the road, just there. But before we look at that, my plan is to go onto the railway bridge and I want to see what happens to the railway line beyond here. Um, if there is anything to see. I know it was a coal terminal for a while, and then I understand there's talk of making that also into an aggregate terminal, so I'm not too sure. But anyway, that's the station which the bus is about to hide, but we're going to have a look at that afterwards. So Chessington South Station, just there. There's these big gates here. That almost looks like it could be an aggregate terminal. Let's just have a look, see what the bridge is going to reveal. Well, this is the final bridge we're going to come to. 13 miles and 79 chains. And, uh, oh, interesting, there's tracks. So what I'll do, I'll go over the bridge this side, then we'll come back over the other side. So there is definitely track in place. Looks as though, oh, that's interesting. So you can see there's a crossover. I don't know how obvious it is on the camera, but just beyond the crossover, there's a fence across. So maybe there are trains now. I'll have to look on real-time trains, see if there are any freights beyond Chessington oh. itself. So the station is on the other side. At the moment, you cannot travel under this bridge on a passenger train, but if... Oh, can we get across? Yeah, we can get across. We'll go over to the other side, and then we'll we'll look down on the station, and I expect there's a train. So if you just come to the Chessington World Adventures, you'd come out here, and uh, there's a sign there. So you follow that sign. I'm not going to do that today. But, yeah, if, just if you do come along. Yeah, no, we'll get across the road. I'll run across, just to save time across the road and we're heading now to the railway station so Chessington South Station so Chessington North is kind of the main one the one everyone uses less people probably use Chessington South if we look down here we should be able to see the train just down there um, so yeah there we go look there's a class 455 just down there so we've that is as far as passenger trains go I'm tempted to when I get on get on right down this end so I can say I've been as far as you, I can possibly go. Now we're not going to see very well unless the train literally leaves now but there is a platform on the other side with a canopy it's never been used because this line when it got to here 1939 this was never meant to be a terminus so that's why it's got very much the feeling of a through station. Interestingly this seems to be the only one on the branch we've seen that you go down to track level all of the others you went up so we're going to go down there now. The line was planned to go to Leatherhead. It didn't ever happen. There was a big uh, thing there saying, big painting, welcome to Chessington South. The plan was for the line to go to Leatherhead. If you want to go beyond here, now you have to go by bus. It never made it beyond here to Leatherhead. Maybe that's a video for another day to explore what would have happened, but there's various other railways that have done similar things. The Northern Heights project was a project that was canceled on the Northern line. The central line was going to go to Denham. All these things didn't happen because of the Second World War. 
So this is the station. It's a bit. Um, feels doesn't look so imposing, but I think that's because you're going down, not going up. So let's go in and have a look. And see what Chessington South Station has to offer us. They're just coming in now. Uh, there's, uh, there's a ticket machine. It doesn't even appear to be a ticket office. So train to Waterloo is due. So yeah, there, maybe if it, there would have been a bridge across there, thinking about it, had it been, you know, the through station it was designed to be. There are various other stations around that are termini that were never intended to be termini, but they're not that common. So here we are, down on the platform. There's the train. It's going in a couple of minutes. Let's just walk right to the platform end. Platform one. For Funny they say platform 16, one because there's only one platform that you can use. Yeah, so I reckon if you look up there, that wood was not intended to be there. The bridge would have gone across, down, and onto the other platform. If it was daylight, which it pretty much is dark now, I'd show you through the window what there is. Um, or do I wait? I think I, I kind of want to get back to London now because I, if I have to wait here, it'd be half an hour's wait with really nothing to do. But let's go right to the very end of Chessington South, the last name board on this line. Let's go right to the end and just see what we can see. I'm not going to go past the point or cross line here, you can't really see it, but there we are, there's a class 455, 455, 735. So, from Chessington South Station, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. I'm going back to London now. Goodbye.